Hello, we're here with Justice Raquel Montoya Lewis, uh, who is running for re-election to Supreme Court position three. Would you like to go ahead with your two minutes? Introduction. Yes. Um, I really appreciate all of your time and I, I know that it's taking away time from your families and, and other things you might be doing. Uh, so I really am grateful for your time. One of the things that I've really appreciated um, over the course of beginning my campaign and meeting people through these endorsement interviews, I think all of which have been through virtual media like this, um, is the commitment that people have to, to the process and the interest that I've seen from people in the Supreme Court has been really exciting uh, to me. So I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to continuing my campaign uh, and meeting, continuing to meet people who are really engaged in the process. I'm looking forward to uh, retaining the seat that Governor Inslee appointed me to. Um, my entire career has been a career uh, of service and using my law degree um, for the greater good, for want of a better way to put that. Um, it's always been um, my, my drive to serve the community. Um, and, and now that, that means to me uh, the citizens of the state of Washington. So I, I'm really honored to be here and answer your questions and give you some of my thoughts about the importance of the court and, and why I think that I should continue to be there. Um, there's been a lot made of, of my um, status as the first Native person on the Supreme Court bench, and I recognize the historical importance of that uh, and the meaning that that has for many people. And that's been very gratifying. But, but for me, what is, what is important is what I said at my announcement with Governor Inslee is, is that it is much more important to me that I not be the last Native person to be on the state Supreme Court and that I ensure over the course of my career that um, I demonstrate that someone who comes from a background like me with experiences like mine adds to the court um, and, and doesn't um, you know, and, and can serve in that kind of a broad role. So Thank I look you. forward to answering all your questions today. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now go to our prepared questions and I see that Robert has posted those into the chat box. Um, Katie, I have you down for the uh, first question. Would you like to go ahead with that? Sure. The long one. It is. Um, it, uh, question one. In the 1930s, a right-wing court invalidated a voter-approved measure to create a graduated income tax in Washington state on a narrow 5-4 vote. Earlier this year, the Supreme Court refused to rule on whether that precedent remained valid. Do you believe that case, Culleton versus Chase, was uh, correctly decided, would you be willing to overturn it? Thank you for the question. I have to be a little bit careful about how I answer this question um, because it was a live case in, in front of the court um, and one I felt strongly about, I'll put it that way. Um, I, I think that it's important, the precedent is an important um, part of the work that we do on the Supreme Court. It is important that people be able to look to, um, to the case law and to the historical approach that the court has had to, to issues and be able to predict what's going to happen next. I think that matters. And I was taught as a law student how much, how important that is. I don't think that that uh, should, should uh, be the exclusive approach to the law. I strongly believe that it should be our job and it is our job and it is the approach I take to really interrogate the basis for um, what that precedent says and be willing to take on the hard cases and, um, and be willing to, um, to change our approach if the times uh, call for that, whether that means that we conclude that a case like that is, was incorrectly decided um, and should be overturned, I think we should not be afraid. Um, to take those kinds of things on. Um, so it, I, I don't think it's probably appropriate for me to directly answer the question about whether or not I would overturn that particular case because it's my seconds. view that that's going to come up in front of the court again and probably sooner rather than later. 
But I do deeply believe that just because something is precedent does not mean that we should stop there. I think that's we should begin there and we should look at the underlying reasons why the case was decided as it was. Great, thank you. Um, Alice, I have you down for question two. Um, can you do the question uh, well? Um, yeah, I, can, I think I can do it. Okay, okay. Uh, question number two is an easy one. Well, it's not an easy one, it's a short one. Um, do you support the death penalty? Uh, I don't. Um, I think that's a pretty, pretty easy question for me to answer. When I ap applied for my position as Superior Court Judge um, five or six years ago, the governor's uh, attorney interviewed me uh, as a candidate for that position, and he asked what I would do if I had a case that involved the death penalty where the state was seeking the death penalty. And effectively, what he asked me is whether I could impose the death penalty if I uh, believed personally that, um, that I should not. I think it's the, the, a judge's job to follow the law. And I have done many things over the course of my career that um, applied the law in a manner that I personally uh, would have done something different. As a Supreme Court Justice, I have the opportunity to do things differently um, that I did not have as a Superior Court Judge. And, and what I said to, uh, to Governor Inslee's counsel five or six years ago, is I said that I had worked with a justice on the New Mexico Supreme Court who had resigned from his position as a trial court rather than impose a punishment that he believed to be unconstitutional and then several years later ran for Supreme Court and won. That is a model of integrity that I believe in that, and uh, I have perhaps not taken as public a position um, with respect to um, decisions I've made, but I've certainly uh, resigned as a judge in other contexts as a result of, of uh, believing that what was happening um, was inappropriate and and uh, violated my my own deeply held belief about what a judge uh, should and should not do. I think the court, the Supreme Court, was correct in Gregory in invalidating um, the, the the death penalty. Ten and seconds. I think, I think the basis for that was accurate. It is racially discriminatory across the board wherever it has been applied, and for that reason, I cannot support it. Thank you. Um, Hannah, would you like to ask question three? Yes, I would. Uh, should Washington State continue to elect Supreme Court justices in contested elections, or should we use some other model? Are you concerned that having to face challengers in an auction would shape the way that the court decides cases? I, I am. Uh, I, I, my view is that if there is a role for for voters in choosing who's on the Supreme Court. I think that that has become increasingly problematic over the last 20 years, where the influx of significant amounts of money into those elections has affected the outcome of those elections in ways that are much more political than they are legal. And I think that's a real problem. Um, I, my view is that the model should be that um, that voters should elect someone to the Supreme Court and following that, voters should vote on whether to retain that justice um, rather than continuing to have contested elections um, over the course of the rest of that justice's career. Instead, they should, have, should be, uh, it should be a vote of, should they One be minute. yes or no. Um, I, I do think that having continual contested elections puts a kind of political pressure on the justices that as elections get closer or when there's decisions where the justice believes um, they should take a view that might be politically dangerous. I, I think it's, it's hard not to have that calculus uh, come in at least to, to into the thought process. At least it is my hope that it doesn't ultimately lead to a particular conclusion. Seconds. Case. But I do think um, that there's a risk to that, and and certainly as someone in, in my first year, um, I I have uh, seen that um, 
that issue be raised um, in the course of thinking about cases and what the outcome should be. I think that that's inappropriate and not something that we should be thinking about as the Supreme Court, because I think we should be thinking about what the law should be and why it should be that, not whether or not that satisfies voters. Thank you so much. Um, Sherry, would you like to go ahead with question four? Thank you. Uh, I have to scroll down now. Uh, there it is. Okay. So which U.S. Supreme Court justice, past or present, do you consider as a model for how to be an effective and just member of the highest court? Yeah, that's a that's a really great question. And I, I think that, that what comes to my mind uh, is Justice Sonia Sotomayor. And I, I say that because from my perspective, uh, she really is the first U.S. Supreme Court justice who I could look to to see a story that in some way One left. Uh, reflects, uh, reflects something that is, that is relatable, I guess, uh, for me. And, and so that, that's where I start from in terms of my thinking about her. She has a story that I understand and her, her writing about her own story was um, some of the first, one of the first times I had ever seen some, someone speak about their experience as a judge and as a justice that reflected some of my own experience. Um, and I, I, I'm really appreciative of her willingness to talk about those things in a public manner. In terms of her jurisprudence, what I admire most about her is her uh, willingness to be very direct in what she believes to be um, the right decision. Her dissents in particular, I think really call out um, her views on what is just and what is the, what the, what the law should be and, and why it should be that. Um, and she doesn't mince words. She's very clear about what she 30 thinks. Seconds. I, also, I also think that she thinks um, about who's going to be reading her, her jurisprudence, who's going to be reading her opinions and her dissents or concurrences. And she writes them in a way that is accessible to people other than lawyers. That's something that I believe is, um, is at the foundation of what what I think a good justice is, is someone that's able to communicate about the law in a way that is accessible to most people, not just a, a sliver. Great, thank you. Um, now we're going to go ahead and open this up to uh, follow up questions, and the responses to those are one minute apiece. Um, and if anybody would like to ask a follow up question, just raise your hand or message me. Sometimes it takes a little while to find the buttons. <laughs> okay, well, I don't, um, I have a question for you. Uh, what do you consider to be the greatest accomplishment in your legal career? It goes back a while, I think. Um, I've had a number of experiences as a tribal court judge um, where I have had the opportunity to work with, um, with families who have had their children removed for reasons of abuse or neglect and develop a process that supports the reunification of families. Um, I, I spent a lot of time working with tribes on how to develop child welfare programs and responses uh, to those cases, tribal courts, that reflected the values of uh, those individual tribes as well as their definitions of justice. Uniformly across the board, every tribe I've ever worked for uh, has believed in, in reunification of families. And I was able to develop um, approaches and models for individual tribes that um, that really were successful in reunifying families and 
um, seeing that and understanding that that had long-term consequences. 10 and, seconds. Um, and broke the generational um, experience of institutionalized care for children is something I'm, I'm very proud of. Thank you. Are there any other follow-up questions? Any other follow-ups? I have more. <laughs> got oh, I see up. Jeff. Go for it, Jeff. Uh, hi. Uh, so uh, the Supreme Court oversees the Washington State Bar Association. And I'm, I'm a member of the bar for full disclosure. So just wondering what thoughts you had about the state of the Bar Association and um, um, you know, what strengths or weaknesses it may have and where you see it going forward. Yeah, it's a very timely question. I spent most of my day trying to get caught up on what had happened in the last couple of years and, and what that means going forward. So I'm, I'm, I appreciate your question. Uh, it's clear to me that the Bar Association has faced a tremendous amount of turmoil over the last couple of years. And there's been all, what I would view as a pretty significant breakdown in communication between the Supreme Court and the Bar Association and the Board of Governors. Uh, I really hope that that can be repaired because I do think that having a mandatory bar is, is important and, and governance really matters and affects people in really concrete ways. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that, that, that those things can be addressed. I think they have to be addressed directly and openly and it's not clear to me that that's really happened um, in as concrete a way as it probably seems. So I, I, um, I'm hopeful that as part of my job, I can um, be a part of solving some of those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Anybody else? All right, I have one. Um, how will uh, the work that you've done in the tribal courts, uh, how will that help in your current role uh, as a, a Washington State Supreme Court Justice? Um, you know, I, one of the things I took from my work in tribal courts um, was the experience of really being able to work with communities and develop legal systems that reflected their own definitions of justice. Every tribe I have ever I've worked with, and, and I've worked with some extensively and others um, in much more briefer um, ways, like coming in to do one or two cases, every tribe has, has attempted to create a tribal court that, that reflects them, their, their values uh, and their definitions of justice. That's very unique because I've had the opportunity to, to see legal systems work in ways that are different from the one in state courts and federal courts that everyone is used to. So I think that diversity of experience in looking at how health systems can work is something that I bring to the Supreme Court that's extremely unique and brings a perspective um, that I think is, is an important one. Thank you so much. Any other questions? I think we have time for one more. All right, I don't. What is uh, your general judicial philosophy? Um, I, I really believe that uh, the law should be responsive to the needs of the people who are coming through the doors of the courthouse. Uh, the Supreme Court cases are, are often, when you reference to the first, in the first question to Culleton is a, is a great example, are often utterly inaccessible to anyone who's not an attorney and sometimes inaccessible to anyone who's not a justice. That does not work. I have spent a tremendous amount of time as a, as a judge um, trying to figure out how the decision of the Supreme Court gets applied in my physical courtroom. I, I really expect myself to push our court um, to make decisions that are clear, that are applicable, that are pragmatic and understand um, the, what, what uh, judges and people truly face in the world. So I'm very much a pragmatist when it comes to my approach as a judge. 
Thank you so much. Uh, if you'd like, uh, you can take a minute and to wrap up and uh, tell folks uh, why they should uh, consider you uh, as a Supreme Court justice. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the question about what I see as my, my biggest success um, in my professional career. Um, I was really raised to uh, think about the work that I do as it applies to the broader community, that it really is not about my own accomplishment, but rather what I can do for others. I continue to see that role of service being the foundation to the work I do as a Supreme Court Justice. And I really am excited about that work, um, both in terms of what we do in the cases, as well as how we address the issues related to administrating the administration of justice. I really am hopeful that I will be able to retain this position and I expect that I will um, through and I look forward to working really hard over this course of this campaign um, to continue to secure my position. I really appreciate everybody's time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.